their life after Chernobyl some 10 years ago, many would be tempted to say no. But today it looks like the nuclear disaster-torn region has thriving wildlife and returning population. We have with us Oleha Bondarenka, a member of National Commission for Radiation Protection of Ukraine and former director of Chernobyl Radio Ecological Center. Uh, but before we go into discussion, let's take a look at our video report from the town of Chernobyl, where our team spoke with an employee of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, as well as with an 80-year-old man who, for 18 years ago, decided to return to his abandoned home in Chernobyl. Четвертый реактор Чернобыльской атомной. Авария на Чернобыльской атомной электростанции. A floor stand RZB for controlling battery radiation. We have hands here on this side, hands on the inside, chest, torso, knees, head. This is my outdoor shower. I returned in 2000. I was born in the city of Slavutic, and I have actually worked here since 2013. I've changed positions a few times. By education, I'm an international relations and politics specialist. I now work in the International Cooperation Department. We have to change down to our underwear. We dress completely in white, socks, trousers, and a shirt like this, and a set with more trousers and a jacket, and also white boot covers. We know what to be afraid of what the risks are, and everyone sets their own limits when it comes to these risks. I have a dog named Chestnut. I like this color for some reason. He's such a nice dog. Calm down, Chestnut. You can't do that. My daughter lives in Vishneva, on the ninth floor. She found some guy who now moved in with her. My son is in his fourth year at the Politechnical Institute. And Mihailo Pavlovich is here alone in Chernobyl. He's not going anywhere. There are no women for me here, and my children don't have a place for me. Chestnut! Shush! The Chernobyl nuclear power plant is currently in the stage of being decommissioned. We have a 65-year national-wide decommissioning program. We started in 2000, so we still have many years to remove these three electrical power units. As you can see, Bashu 3, the control panel of the third block. This is exactly the same one as in the fourth block. So these are blocks from the same line, which were made by the same construction company. My wife worked at an orphanage. They took kids from the orphanage in Veladarka, past Bilaterkva, another 50 kilometers from there to the west. It so happened that my younger daughter took out a loan to get a two-bedroom flat. So I sold this house and gave her a loan. And then I went to my own house in Chernobyl. Thanks to the administration, they let me in without any problems. I live in my own house. <laughs> Look, it says, I don't drink and I don't smoke over there. I used to smoke when I was younger, but I gave it up. 
This is our integrated automated control system for the covering, and you can see what we were talking about, the third subzone. Therefore, stuff can be easily here with our respirators. Because we are dressed in the lightweight version of our protective clothing, we can only go there. If, for example, we went through the door of the central hall of the reactor, it would be signposted that this is the first subzone and that you can't go in there. Good, let's go and look at something interesting. My wife bought us this from Pripyat. She was there somewhere and she brought us a sign. Shock work for the homeland to cover a barrel of cucumbers. Let them decommunize this place. It's no big deal for me. It's my history. I can't escape from it. We milled grain. Three classes worked in my command. The first, second and third. I had so much communication that I can't complain. This is a German tin and this is ours. Look, why do I have them? I found them. They're memories. Now you've seen them too. Damn it, I forgot. If I remember that I didn't tidy up, I, I would have... Here, I have a deck chair, and those are stones from Zakarpatia that someone brought me. What is NSC, New Safe Confinement, or ARCH? What is covering object? It's a protective structure or the fourth reactor unit. What is the sarcophagus? The sarcophagus is nothing. It was invented in 90s by the press and for some reason they called the covering a sarcophagus. We don't have a single document stating what that is at the Chernobyl power plant. <laughs> Come over here and film this, please. I'll tell you about it. These are my mother's icons. This icon was given to me when I was in Pachayev. This one my daughter Oksana brought from Israel. It's also an icon. I'm not aging because I returned to my own land, where I was born. Look, yesterday I planted five rows of potatoes. My daughter was here. She helped me a little bit. She's grown up now. She's nice and everything's good. People ask to go home, like the elderly people. They would happily give away their flats to their children to come here and look after these areas. Millions of people, millions would flee from Crimea, from Donetsk, from Luhansk. If the country's leaders, the leadership of the zone, were interested in this, they would come and have a look around too. Over there where it's fenced off, a neighbor lives there. The whole street is inhabited. When you go there, you'll see. If we talk about the power station stuff, then 90% of the workers live in Slavutich. The other 10, approximately, live in other parts of Ukraine or in Chernihiv. Look, you actually asked how safe it is here. If we say that 100 microsieverts is the dose you're allowed to receive, this is what you receive just outside the arch. What we mean by gamma activity is 10 microsieverts per hour. So you can stand there for 10 hours and you would reach the permitted dose of radiation. This is next to the new safe confinement arch. The arch Arch completely covers the covering. Reactor 4 is under the covering. I will tell you that people fear that which they do not know. There is the same risk with things that people do know about. When you are sat behind the wheel of a car, there is a risk of an accident. When you are sat on a plane, there is certainly a risk of an accident. I think it's like what happens with a lot of professional soldiers. You think that they are under the tremendous amount of stress, but they have their own point of view on something, which is definitely very difficult for us to understand. It's definitely something like this for professionals that work in the nuclear sector. So, how did you like my suite? Let's go. So, Ole, we just looked at the report uh, from the town of Chernobyl. But for our international audience, what would you uh, tell about the level of the uh, pollution, of how we can assess the general situation in the Chernobyl zone? You know that there are four, th yes. four zones, uh, zones. The first one is mm, ex uh, actually exclusion zone. Uh, the uh, second one zone, at the moment, there is no any city in this zone, so the situation is much better. Third zone is about 30 uh, cities. And uh, according to this uh, um, uh, passportization, 
about uh, 2,000 cities is out even of fourth zone. So if we compare with the, uh, at the beginning, the situation is much better. Uh, most uh, contaminated areas are located at the north of Kyiv, Zhytomyr, uh, Rivne and uh, Volyn regions. That's it, in general. So what impact it has today on the population and what still should be done by the authorities, by the government? If we now speaking about the, let's say, health of the people, we'll go for later. A lot of things uh, were done for this moment. The expenditures of uh, former Soviet Union and then of Ukrainian budgets uh, were huge. Uh, we can talk about effectiveness of these uh, spendings, but it is another issue. Uh, what, what is left at the moment? Uh, first of all, people uh, still living in the uh, cities under uh, monitoring of uh, third and fourth zone should be um, provided all necessary conditions for their normal living. And this population is not very huge. It is uh, uh, several dozen thousands of people. Uh, another issue is um, human health, because according to uh, general figures uh, published uh, from the beginning, about 5 million of uh, former Soviet Union people were irradiated after a Chernobyl accident. So it is a huge population. And what should be done at the moment, it is uh, insurance system providing uh, them, these people, in case they suffer from uh, certain uh, diseases uh, after Chernobyl, first of all, cancer. Still, we don't have proofs for very uh, certain effects after uh, Chernobyl radiation, except particular um, strata of people, for example, liquidators. For them, it is for sure uh, uh, research that uh, they uh, um, observed additional 5% of cancer on the natural level, but it is for liquidators. These people obtained much higher average doses than population. I should average. say that our next report, which I suggest we watch, is exactly about the about that, exactly about the access to the uh, health care, in particularly in the war-torn region. Уже в 87-м в Чернобыле. 56 выездов на БК-2. Вот это на рекорд пошел. Делать нечего. Ну, ну трехкратно. Платежка в трехкратно. Ну, пенсию неплохую дают. Сколько это больше? 6 700. Ну, это неплохо по теперешнему времени. Угу. Очень хорошо. В общем, по зоне едешь, ну, там город есть такой, Чернобыль, Припять. Пустой город, никого, оставлены квартиры, уехали. Это уже 30 лет прошло, елки все. Привели на собеседование туда-сюда. Завтра сразу бросали, не бейся, а я врачу, все, все ходят, и мы, ну, поехали. Респиратор и вперед. В общем, научили, ничего страшного. Ну, а самое сделали до нас саркофаг, этот закрыли, ребята что же, солдаты такие. Давление у меня повышенное вообще с детства. 150 на 100 было постоянно, где-то такое давление. 
У него перед тем, помнишь, перед инсультом мы шли на гранитное ехать, а ты сказал, что ты у меня это... Ну да, такое что-то я про пробил. Этот дёргаю. глаз дергается левый. Левый глаз дергается, сказал, и ногу тянет. А потом да. 2 января пошел ну, мозг. Это нарушение мозгового кровообращения, инсульт да. называется. Я Раньше был мозг, я симпатичный. Потом это же... штук 200, так выражаешь. Знакомство имел так, ну, по, по памяти так. Ну, мимолетные такие знакомства. А встретилась вот такая. Сама Данила. Ну, рады? Я рад, что она. Ну, 14 лет прошла девочка. Это не каждый бы решился на это. Четыре года мы прожили. Это гражданский подвиг называется. Вместе мы уже восемь. Пахты чуть-чуть, да. Ну, бендерка за грека, как мало, да, это вообще интер... Я не бендерка, я рядом, недалеко от Киева, я центральная Украина. А, ну, центральная, это что, что хлушка или как? Ну, ну зап, западники, это бендеры, да? Щира Украинка, а Щира, ты? ну я. А ты? Грек... Я Оксана Белозик, да, щира. Греко-татарин, ты смесь бульдога с носором. Это правильно, эксклюзион зон was arranged by decree of the government in 1986 uh, and it is most restrictful zone in the Ukraine and, and still it is. So the entering uh, the exclusion zone is forbidden, just f free entering. Uh, and uh, at the moment uh, the control I would say, is at very good level, in general. Uh, regarding uh, shield, you mean... The uh, sarcophagus. Ah, sh shelter. shelter. Uh, they, they call uh, object shelter. Uh, actually, it is, it is called uh, the, the recently uh, uh, arch, what we uh, saw, bef uh, watched uh, before the start of our um, um, program. It is uh, called the shelter, shelter the second, because uh, uh, the first shelter was built in extremely uh, concise uh, time uh, uh, period uh, in uh, 1986, without any design, but uh, it is most uh, successful countermeasure in the Chernobyl uh, accident uh, history. I also should um, would probably draw attention to another story. So while some people left Chernobyl and never returned, there are also those <coughs> who have just moved to outside the exclusion zone. Some of them move from the Donbass region, heavily affected by Russia-Ukrainian war. One of them is uh, Valeria Kostyuk. She has been living in Zelena Poliana, just nine kilometers away from Chernobyl for around six months, and that's her story. This is Lara. She has three children. Sarhi, the oldest, is ten. Olya, the middle child, is seven. And the youngest, Sonia, is only two. For the last six months, the family have been living in the village of Zelena Polana, not far from the Chernobyl exclusion. Lara is from Snizhna, in the Donetsk region. The city is currently under separatist control. In 2014 2015, Snizhna was a hotspot in the armed conflict. The situation has not improved over the last two years. The family were forced to leave. We suffered and suffered and we had to because it was dangerous remaining to these conditions with small children, of course. You sit at home, there is these explosions like thunder. It frightens me as well, you know. When the baby was born, I had to fill some documents. I remember it was a tax office. I went, walked and walked, searched and searched. Nothing. I asked some passerby, by and he said, yes, there is a tax office. I looked over and it was a pile of bricks. That it was. Lara gathered her children, packed her things, locked her flat and traveled to Zelena Polana. She left her relatives and friends behind in Snizhna. 
We got through it, of course, well, it was nothing really, mainly because the military situation had A's up. They looked at the baby, who you are, little one, what's your name? They said, Sofika. They were joking, even the people stood nearby supported us. This was an empty building, which the previous owners allowed Lara to live in. Her relatives in Snizhne sent her some of her things that she left behind. This is our little home, it was built by older sister. Yes, she called Ola, that's right. This is where she laid down some branches here at tree stumps. She put towels on them, but we took them off. We also took the shit off the grass, because there is nothing we can do with them here. Zelena Poliana was not part of the exclusion zone. The locals say that a radioactive cloud settled above here. Although the people were not evacuated, many left on their own accord. Less than 300 people remained in the village. From here, it's 9 kilometers to the Poliska checkpoint, where the exclusion zone starts, and 54 kilometers to Chernobyl itself. The nearest school and hospital are in the neighboring village. Lara's children travel there every day on the school bus. There used to be five displaced families from Donbass in Zelena Poliana. The local residents invited them to live in their homes. But the displaced people did not stay long, as there is no work in the village. Therefore, some have moved to Kiev, and others have returned to Donbass. The world is not without good people, and every time they prove with us again and again, and they better and better. With every problem we get here, more supporters and helpers. As soon as we get here, people came immediately with some potatoes, some cucumbers, tomatoes, mushrooms. One man came with grapes. I'm your neighbor, let's get to know each other. The children are given threats here and there. I wouldn't say it's a catastrophe for me, I'll try to keep going, although it's harder, of course. But what we can do, we'll put through, isn't it? Right, Sonia? Uh, but how you assess generally the level of the ecological awareness by the state and by the population? At some point I've, I sometimes would think that uh, with this history Ukrainians should really include all the things connected to environment, safety, uh, to ecology as something extremely important. But do you see that? And what are also your major concerns? Because from my point of view I understand that uh, we accumulated a uh, huge experience in mitigation of consequences, in understanding reasons, uh, in understanding impacts on uh, the nature, on human. But on the other hand, we still don't have a certain level in uh, keeping and main maintaining safety and security, not only radiological, but ecological as well, in general. But we uh, are generally on the right way in order to be more ecological and uh, as a part of uh, 
Um, uh, this opinion, there is, as I mentioned, uh, the decision of the, our government to found the radiological uh, preserve in the, at the territory of the exclusion zone. It is move in the right direction.